All right, let's dive right into it. So practice exam. Practice exam time. Let's do the practice exam. Let's see every eight. Practice exam. Number one, uh, find the volume under Z equals 3X. Square root of X squared plus Y squared. Not X squared plus Y, X squared. Yeah, there we go. X squared plus Y. And we're doing the region zero is less than or equal to Jericho? Shh. Okay, I can assume it's <laughs> like I'm up here trying to do this. We have very limited time, and I'm just all I can hear is you. So if you want to talk, go outside. It wasn't him, though. Still, fairness, Jericho wasn't talking. It, is. Like it wasn't? It sure, no. fuck, it sure as hell sounded like Jericho. Uh, My bad, loud, Jericho, that wasn't you. Loud, loud equals Jericho. <laughs> now you're getting it. All right, so we need the volume <laughs> under this mm -hmm. uh, surface. We're going to have Z equals zero as the bottom surface. So we're doing integrating from, uh, what do you guys want to do first? Let's do X first. So we'll do Y on the outside. And then zero to one on X. We've got three X square root of X squared plus Y, DX, DY. Do a quick U sub. One half DU equals X, DX. When x equals zero, u equals y, x equals one, u equals y squared plus one, or y plus one. y to y plus one. The x goes away, I have a three halves. Uh, u to the one half, du dy. Got that all cleaned up. Uh, up to three halves, divide by three halves. Just gives me u to three halves. Evaluated from y plus one to y. dy. So, I've got y plus one times the square root of y plus one minus y to the three halves. Let's make that two integrals. And that puts a dy in here. <laughs> equals zero goes to y u equals one y equals three goes to u equals four and this becomes one to four of uh, u on the outside, u to the, I guess I could have just integrated it and left it alone. Now that u to the three has the u minus what we had before. So in both cases, we get a two fists or five halves, two fists there. We've got u to the five halves, four to one, minus y to the five halves from zero to three. Uh, this means we're going to pull out two fours and have the square root of four, which was two. 
So four times four times two is 32 uh, minus one minus, I've got, what do I got here? Nine root three minus zero. I feel like I'm going too fast. I think I missed something, but I don't know what it is. So we got two fifths times 31 minus nine root three. You all did this, some of you did this yesterday. Did you guys get that? I might have gone too quickly right now. And some feels off to me, but. I have the same thing. Okay, good. Ready for more? Oh. I'll pause, do a short pause, let you put that, put it down. Is you ready for the next one? Yeah. Uh, find the volume of the solid bounded by, what do we got? X equals zero, Z equals zero. Uh, and then the upper half is Z equals four minus X squared. And we've got Y equals three X and Y equals nine. What am I looking at here? Y equals three X is like that. Y equals nine is like that. Nine, three X. And X equals zero is that line. Uh, so if we go integrate, we clearly got to do Z first. Uh, x equals zero is given. That's just the x equals zero plane. I just want that in mind. <clears throat> oh, yeah. oh, wait, you did? And okay. then we, if we integrate out y, we go from 3x to 9. And then x is going, where does 3x and 9 meet? This intersection right there is where the y equals 3x equals 9. So x equals 3. Our boundaries on x are 0 and 3. We're doing Just volume. We got a question. Yeah. Uh, at, x, at x equals 3, the z would be negative. You're right. Since I didn't actually state in the problem z equals zero, let's just do it as you uh, pointed out. Huh? Wait, no, it does say z equals zero. It's bound by z equals zero. Yeah, I did. So there is a so there's a cutoff that line then, right? Where does this cut off? X cuts off at two. <clears throat> Okay, this should be a real a lot more complicated problem. Because four minus x squared, that'll give us our boundary there. Four minus x squared equals zero, so x equals two. When x equals two, that's got to be our, our upper limit for x. So it's not going the whole way. There we go. Good catch. 
And then the volume is the function is just one, and then we've got dz, dy, dx. So, Mr. Jones, yeah. if you were to draw a picture of this 3D shape, what would you think it would look, it would look like? Uh, this, it's a parabola going downward, and the z equals x plate. So Z and X is like this. So we have this part right here, it's the arc coming down like that. And as it goes this way, it's not it's not doing the full arc. Either way, I think we got the boundaries well enough. So let's start integrating. Uh, we start off, the first one is Z. Uh, Z to the four minus X squared and zero, we got dy dx. Is it okay for me to erase that Z right now and just put four minus X squared? How about I do this over here? Is that valid? Because I know you asked me not to do this yesterday, but I feel like that one's trivial. <laughs> like integrating a constant, we're just, is, we do this with theta all the time. Yes. All right. So we integrate this bad boy. And uh, I've got four minus X squared Y. Are we good so far? I've got 72 minus 24, <laughs> minus 24 plus 12. So this is 24. 24 plus 12 is 36. Oh, yeah, same test. Um, <clears throat> Was that a three four? Maybe one or two. You moved down a little bit. Hey, Mr. Jones, could you move the whiteboard down a little bit? Thanks, everyone. Let's try this. Oh, that gets more of it on there, doesn't it? <laughs> Just need to make the visualizer when you're smaller. 
You guys ready for another? Students were not very fond of it. That's crappy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Number three, we have uh, two times x plus y dA. Uh, our region is x squared plus y squared is nine and x is greater than or equal to zero. So we're looking at a circle of radius three, but only that part. So in polar, we've got zero is less than or equal to r, less than or equal to three. And negative pi over two to pi over two for theta. <clears throat> and we've got two r cosine theta plus sine theta. I factored out the r out of the x and the y. And then r dA is r dr d theta. So I really, this is two R squared, right? And cosine theta plus sine theta. <clears throat> that is separable. They are products. So I can write this as negative pi over two to pi over two D theta. And zero to three of two R, oh, not D theta, cosine theta plus sine theta. Fail. D theta. And now zero to three of two R squared dr. There we go. Not now, not a fail. So I've got negative sine theta. Nope, I got positive sine theta. minus cosine theta, evaluated from negative pi over two to pi over two. And here I've got two thirds r cubed, evaluated from zero to three. So what do we get? Sine of pi over two, minus cosine of pi over two, and then we've got minus sine of theta, minus sine of negative pi over two, and a minus minus would be plus cosine of negative pi over two. And here we got two thirds times 27. That's three times nine, so the threes will cancel. This just Breaks down to 18. Don't need a calculator. Uh, what do we got? Sine of pi over two is one. Cosine of pi over two is zero. Sine of negative pi over two is negative one. We got a negative one out front of it and then zero. So it looks like one plus one is another two, two times 18. Looks like we got 36 again. What is this madness? It has been all of that. I want to say this one was the actual test a couple years ago when I taught it three years ago. And I think I delivered it's been a while, so I forget, but I think I deliberately chose a couple problems all to have the same answer just to fuck with students' heads when they were taking the test. 
<laughs> yeah, but like when you do it, it's like okay, he's probably just fucking with it. <laughs> yeah. If some other teacher did, then you then it'd be really a freak out. Oh my god. I remember my sister. Everybody good? The Security. second 36, I'd be like, all right, this is weird. The third one, I'd be like, yeah, he's fucking weird. For sure. She had where all every answer was C. I'm about to yeah. move this unless someone says something verbally um, now. Um, so how did you jump to the negative pi over two to pi over two? Uh, I'm, doing the, I'm doing the angle. So the angle starts if I'm picking a path, I want to sweep oh, counterclockwise. Oh, okay. uh, actually, just because x is greater than zero. Yeah, x is greater than zero. Restricted it to the left half or the right half of the right, right. Okay. Graph. Uh, problem number four. We've got negative one to net one. We've got zero to z. We've got zero to square root of y squared plus three. Y z dx dy dz. Oh my goodness. So we integrate right away. And this just becomes there's no x in there, so we add an x. And we're having x times y squared plus 3 to 0. That just becomes y squared plus 3. And then we've got yz dy dz. All right, now we're doing y's. So I'm going to do u sub. When y equals zero, u equals three. When y equals z, u equals z squared plus three. Right. I get a one half in there. I got the y goes away with the dy. I've got u to the one half z du dz. And that's a two. Equal y first. Okay. So when we integrate them, up the power would be one half divided by the power. I just got u to the, u to the one half evaluated from z squared plus three to three times z dz. I've got z square root of z squared plus three. Oh, Mr. Jones, you took the derivative instead of oh, the integral. You made the same mistake as me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you took the derivative when you found it for the square root part. From from where? Here to here? Right. The, yeah. yeah. It, 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 the u to the negative one half, that should be u to the three halves multiplied by two thirds. That's the derivative. I'm integrating. I go up a power to one half and then divide by the power. But you wrote the negative. Oh, one I half. wrote negative one half. Yeah. That's it. Okay. I wrote negative one. Okay. Good. Excellent. Uh, so you're right. That's the three halves. There we go. And we had a one half, and there will be a two thirds. So this will be a one third. Is one third. There we go. So I'll put the one third out front, and that changes what I write here. Very good. And then I've got minus. Uh, let's see. I plug in three. I got three root three z.
Are we good? Am I good right there? I think I'm going to leave that as z squared to the three halves. I don't see why I'm doing what I did. It's not productive. Oh, z. I'm going to make this two integrals. Fractional exponent instead. Well, there's a one third in here. Uh, times three root three z, dz. Okay, so the one third and the three are going to go away. So it'll just be root three z or z root three when we give it. All right, so here we got another u sub. And it looks identical to what's up here. Uh, other than uh, my boundary conditions, check this out. When I plug in z equals negative one, I get u equals four. And when I do it with a uh, positive one, I also get u equals four. So this integral for u is going to go from four to four. And sure, it's uh, one six u to the three halves to u, but that's just going to go away. All we're left with is my other integral, which is minus negative one to one of root three z dz. Because the limits of integration are the same, zero. So here we uh, we got root three over two z squared from one to negative one. And that looks like another big fat zero, doesn't it? Right, there's a negative out front. It doesn't change the end result, but you're right. There was a negative out front. Did you guys get zero? Yeah, zero. Well, it's just a triple problem. I don't know. We're supposed to like apply stuff to the world, and I was just like getting zero. All right, you guys ready for more? Let's take a look at number five. <laughs> How about I just put the fucking paper with the equation up there? I don't want to rewrite all that shit. <laughs> So what kind of boundaries we got? Z is going from, uh, if I do absolute value of Z, it's less than or equal to four minus, square root of four minus X squared and minus Y squared. So I square it and I add the X squared and the Y squared to the left and I get X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared to less than or equal to four. This is a sphere of radius two. This is looking very promising for spherical at this point. Uh, if I had a sphere of radius two, when I project it into the X, Y plane, it's going to make a circle X squared plus Y squared equals four. Does that match up with my DX? X is going from absolute value of x is less than four minus y squared. So x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to four. That's still matching up with the sphere. And negative two to two also matches up with the sphere. This looks like it's a great problem for polar. Not spherical? Do you have to use spherical? I mean, spherical. Yeah, I meant spherical, sorry. 
I was looking at the circle right here. Sorry, fuck me up. Okay, so what do we got? <laughs> so if we rewrite this in spherical, it's a full sphere. So we've got zero to two pi in theta, zero to pi in phi, and zero to two in rho. I've got this is four rho, right? And then we've got our correction factor, rho squared sine phi. Is this just a solid sphere that we're looking at? Yep. But it's not, we're not doing the volume because the function isn't one. So don't just jump to the volume formula. It's not going to work. I know you guys know what the volume of the sphere is, but it's not applicable here. So we've got a four row cube, right? And then a sine phi. This is also separable. So if I separate it, zero to two pi of d theta, zero to pi of sine phi d phi, and zero to two of four rho cubed d rho. So like this? You don't have to separate it, but it's more work if you don't. What's your question, Lawrence? Uh, I'll, ask, I'll ask when we're done. But this is it. This is just a sphere, right? That we're looking at. It's just a sphere, yeah. Yeah. So this will be theta from zero to two pi. And it's multiplied times negative cosine phi or from zero to pi. And this is rho to the fourth from zero to two. So this is two pi minus zero. I've got negative cosine of pi. Negative cosine of pi, it, cosine of pi is negative one, so that's negative, negative one. And then I've got minus a negative from the negative cosine, cosine of zero is one. And then we got two to the fourth power, minus zero. So two pi times two times 16. Is this 64 pi? 36 pi. Nobody got the zero to two pi. That's the circle. The zero to two pi is theta is sweeping the full circle. V is going from top of z axis down to z axis. So that's V's route. This is theta's route. And it only goes max of pi. The D only goes max of pi. Yeah. Otherwise, okay. we'd be doing this triple right. twice if we did the. <clears throat> so, um, say if, like, on the test, you're just like this oh, being a uh, so okay. game and you decided to use rectangular, is it even possible? To do this, yeah, I think that's like a rectangular. I found that it just will be a pain. It, it would be a pain, but I think it's doable. Uh, well, well, I don't know. What would you? What? what where do you? Where do you start? You want to integrate this with respect to z. You've got a z squared inside. A u sub is not going to work. So how do you integrate that with respect to z? Now you're looking at what are we looking at? Like the the trig functions. I mean, it's doable. You should, and if you get 64 pi, if you get the right answer at the end, I'll go through your work if you do it a, the hard, complicated way. 
Uh, but if you get the same answer, there's a good chance you did it right. I just think the harder route you choose. Yeah. That's a chance you did it wrong. Got the right answer. Somehow. Just no pity extra credit just because you couldn't finish the rest of the test and you spent all your time on one problem. All right, you guys ready for the next problem? Steve Jacoby and Paul. You, really you might be, a, you probably would be able to integrate it. It just would be very ugly and very hard and very annoying. So why I don't remember to? the integral where we've got a z squared sure. inside of the square root like that because you can't do a u sub. U sub is not going to work. So. You probably could do like some sort of like straight sub or something, but I think that just kind of brings you back to like polar or something at that point. And now you're, yeah, it would bring you back to. Polar which is which is what it should do because after you integrate out z you're in a polar region uh this is the next problem though let's, let's hop right into it uh again separable You always get the first part of the question. I'll, I'll sketch it. <laughs> That's the worst part. So the zero to four is saying it's going up from zero. It's, it starts in the XY plane and goes up to Z equals four. The R is going from zero to three, which means a circle from of radius three, uh, but we're only going zero to pi, which means only half a circle. And so we've got this half of a cylinder. I don't know, I made this look very wet. There we go, that looks a little bit better. And that's sweeping around all the way back. So half a circle. That looks more like a plane. How without you having like connected the sides. <laughs> Is that better? Well, no, I mean, like, you don't, since it's um, bounded basically by, um, what's the, uh, which one is that? Um, X equals zero, or no, wait, sorry, Y equals zero. zero. Yeah, it you, it doesn't, so you, it kind of looks like you have a plane and you're kind of doing the line and you're going to be honest. Can you hold up my picture and tell me if this would be acceptable? We have half a can. We have a half a cylinder. <laughs> half a can of silver. So Lawrence is wondering if this would be acceptable as a good picture. Can you? Oh, good. Let me change what I'm looking at. Oh, Lawrence, can you show this to me tomorrow or on Saturday? That'll work. Oh, shit. Oops. I know you're going to see me on Saturday. So, like, we got 10 minutes left. Let's get this done. Uh, theta goes from zero to pi. Up power divided by the power, I got three R cubed from zero to three. And I got Z going from zero to four. So I've got pi minus zero. I've got three times 27 minus zero. And I've got four minus zero. So pi 81 and four, 324 pi. Mm -hmm. 
Of the Yes. No, it's yeah. I mean, it's essentially the same idea. You're technically looking at this perspective. Is what x axis? So his x axis is right here. Right here, and he's and here with his y axis. The y equals zero is right here. Right. That's all. So you have you're just looking at it from a different perspective. That's all. You have the same graph. Three. Graphing is not graphing a that function using like overhead. Um, limited information is it always easy? All right. Do your oh, last your problem. problem. We got we got eight minutes. Let's see. Let's see what we can do. Okay. So I got x plus y equals one. X plus y equals two. Uh, three x minus two y equals two. 3x minus 2y equals 5. This looks like a great way of saying u equals x plus y and b equals 3x minus 2y. So what do I want to write x and y as in terms of u and v? Uh, if I subtract uh, 3u, I got minus 3x minus 3y. B minus 3u is negative 5y. So y equals 3 fifths u minus 1 fifth v. And if I do v plus 2y, I got 3x minus 2y. Not 2y, 2u. Uh, 2x and 2y are I've got 2u plus v equals 5x. So x equals 2 fifths u plus 1 fifth v. <clears throat> My Jacobian is 2 fifths, 1 fifth, 3 fifths, negative one fifth. So I've got negative two twenty fifths minus three twenty fifths. Again, this is absolute value. Uh, that's going to be five over twenty five, which reduces to one fifth. And we're going to ignore the first quadrant part of that statement. As uh, Benjamin pointed out, part of that is not in the first quadrant. So our U is now going from one to two on U. And B is going from uh, two to five. So the area in, the, in this region, let's, I don't know if we do V on the outside. <coughs> We've got one fifth to UDV. This is separable. I did that entire problem in three minutes. Bam, that's how you do it, folks. That's including 
bypassing that lazy ass shit Brandon was teaching people. I mean, you could have probably done it in two minutes if you did it my way. Yeah, I would have given you five. No, you would have given five. yeah, one of them. Yeah, you would have gotten the same thing, one fifth. Ooh. And then you'd be a determinant with only integers. Ooh. What? Maybe that would have been faster. Oh, actually, you still have to do one over that determinant. I think it's bad habit to get into because it doesn't work in 3D. Uh, well, it and while might you're not learning, work in 3D. While you're learning how to do shit, do it the right way. Don't take shortcuts. Shortcuts are for pros. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll be holding my regular SI hours tomorrow from 4 to 5 p.m. in John Muir 107. Not one I have not erased any of these things, so I will take pictures of these and load them to Discord. Yes, you have a question. Adam, I I have number four. Let me. I'm gonna put it uh, loaded on Discord. That's for Adam on uh, online. I didn't erase any of them. I uh, had my shit together today. How about that? <laughs> hey, you know, it took the semester, but I finally got it right. 